Hi, I am Monica Brandt, one of the world's first true fitness pioneers starting back in 1991. I helped launch the fitness industry while traveling internationally, meeting fans worldwide to share my style of fitness to the bodybuilding community. After a decade of fitness competitions, I earned one of the world's most prestigious titles, the IFBB Fitness Olympia Championships. Moving into the new millennium, I was the first IFBB Fitness Olympia athlete to transition into the new professional figure division and compete for close to another 20 years. After 15 years as an IFBB professional, I tried another organization and won the WBFF World Pro Figure Championships both 2010 and 2013. I am a true athlete and made my way into racing into the Masters USATF Sprint events, placing top three at the World's Masters track meet in all three events, the 100, 200, and 400 meter races. Besides athletics, I have been honored with over 100 magazine covers, both nationally and internationally. Since it's always a blessing to share with others, over the last 15 years, I've hosted women's fitness events and worked with the clients, helping them discover how to live radiantly in all areas of life, body, mind, soul, and spirit. Monica Branch Show is one of the ways I am honoring the legendary athletes, powerhouse individuals, and nutrition gurus that have laid a strong foundation in the past, help keep the current industry flowing, and offer inspiration to the next generations. Hello, hello, hello. It is Tuesday night. That means the Monica Branch Show here, Talk Show Tuesday. I'm so excited. My special guest is coming on here soon, but this has been, uh, it seems like a little bit of a challenge to get our schedules to line out and come on here. We were uh, had a few cancellations in the past for various reasons. The last one was me with a bad internet connection when I was in Georgia. So we're now back with tonight and it's actually happening. I was kind of curious. I'm like, is something going to come up tonight again? It <laughs> caused us not to get this chance to talk. But I'm so excited to bring on our very, very special guest tonight. If you're on right now, will you please log in or not log in, but comment over there. Let me know where you're coming in from. It'd be fun to say hi to you, where everyone's uh, joining us from. I'm here at, right outside of San Antonio, Texas. And my special guest is in California. I think uh, Marina Del Rey to be exact, but we can ask him when he comes on. So without any further ado, this gentleman is a dear friend of mine for a very long time. Um, he's not only a friend, but he is Mr. Universe four times over. He's been a power, power building, power building, power lifting champion multiple, multiple, multiple times. Can't wait to talk about that. And I know my guests are going to, my viewers are going to be excited about that too. Um, he's been a cover model, you guys, 500 times. I mean, I, I thought I had a lot of covers, but that is crazy. Um, only one that's had more covers than this gentleman is Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's an actor. He's got a business. He's an entrepreneur. He's been in the fitness and bodybuilding industry for a very long time, and he's helped create what we know today as the a bodybuilding fitness industry. Um, he's a very, very special guest. Let's welcome, uh, warm welcome tonight from Mr. Mike O'Hearn. Bring him in, Kona. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> awesome, awesome. Hi, Mike. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Mike Show. There it is. <laughs> now we know it's really you since you did the post. <laughs> Superstar. This has been a crazy ride trying to get on here, and I'm so glad to be here. Um, man, uh, thank you for the intro, too. I appreciate that. Oh, I got a little tongue-tied on powerlifting. <laughs> I don't know why. I was trying to join those words together. Tonight, it's, it's join the words night. I don't know, but got a little tongue-tied. But it's so good to have you on. Thank you, Mike, for taking the time. I see that we have a ton of people joining, um, one of them being Mr. Scott Van Orn Ornum. I know you've been working with Scott for a while out of Wisconsin. I'm sure he is uh, getting his butt whipped by you. <laughs> I'm actually taking it easy on him. He's a beast, though. <laughs> You're taking it easy. That's not what I heard from his wife, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what hard is just yet. Oh, you're easing it in. I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> All right, we've got Lori on from Texas. Hi, Lori. Max says Michigan, and I've got my screen. I've got a big screen over here, so if I'm looking over here, apologize. I just don't have the best vision right in front of me with the little print. But we've got a good friend of mine, Rick Hassan. He's in Texas, all capital letters. You know, we love our Texas here. Michael from California. Sean uh, from Florida. Donise, hi, my special sweet friend. She's in uh, Texas here as well. Jeffrey Jodway, the Titan, he says, with all kinds of exclamation points afterwards. And that's you, obviously, not where he lives. <laughs> and John Butler, thank you for joining us again up in Canada. Do you remember John Butler? He was with yep. Muscle Muscle Mag. Oh, yeah. I know that. I know that. Oh, he's going to be so happy to hear. This is pretty cool that you do the podcast, the live show, but then you also have the interaction of the fans. I think that is awesome. Ah, uh, thank you. I agree. And I, I, you know, this is really new for me, Mike, even though this is number maybe 10 show for me, I only do one a week. And in the past, I've always been the one being interviewed, right? And so now I'm, I'm trying to figure out the hosting piece, which I really love. And so it's fun that I get to do these with the people that I know and that have literally helped create and build the bodybuilding fitness industry from your like people like yourself, these legendary icon bodybuilders. I've got all kinds of great um, old old celebrity uh, bodybuilders coming on and nutrition powerhouses, people that are specialized in special specialty parts of the nutrition piece. So I'm really excited. I've got some really great lineup for the next few months, and I'm building out through the end of the year. So in the meantime, I'm really trying to get my hosting skills lined out, but and connecting with people is what I love to do. I love that. <laughs> I, I think one of the things that I found with, with hosting is the conversation <laughs> always goes somewhere else where you didn't expect it, and it's the greatest thing in the world when it just does do that. You know, you plan out your skit, you plan out what you're going to do, and then it goes somewhere else. <laughs> And you go into something so deep and meaningful that it really does like hit some people and, and change some lives. So I love that part of being the interviewer. <laughs> right. Interview. Right. Well, I agree. And, you know, I wanted to start doing these shows because, number one, with the lockdown, I've been really curious. How are all the people that I know doing? How is everyone doing? How are people hanging into or holding on to their fitness, to their health? you know, mentally, physically. And I thought it would be really interesting for me to find those things out. And also for my viewers and my fans to interact with their fans. So this show came about because of that purpose. And then I thought the other thing is there's so many new people in our industry that really don't know the icons that are really true icons and aren't just maybe Facebook or, or maybe Instagram famous, but they're really the true icons that like yourself set the tone way back when for what's going on now. And you're still a very big part and very relevant to what's going on now. So I just think it's really awesome to get to connect. And thankfully we have technology that works more than not. <laughs> right. And we can make it happen. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of these gentlemen here, let's see, Jonathan says um, he's having crown and going to enjoy the show. <laughs> Round world. Right. <laughs> hey, that's great. That's great. As long as it's not, um, we got some. Oh, uh, uh, Mary, Mary Weibel. Hi, Mike. Titan crew. <laughs> she must be on your Titan crew. So let's get into this. Before we get into too much, I just want to say a quick thank you to my sponsors um, and thank you to my hair. Well, she didn't do my hair tonight. We just kept it all natural, but she did my glam tonight. 
Miss Barbara Casarin, and I uh, just wanted to say thank you. And also, we have some giveaways tonight. So I've got a couple questions for our, our viewers to answer. So how this works, guys, is I've got two questions, both about Mr. Michael Hearn. So if you don't know the answer, these should be answers that you can go online quickly and find out. Whoever um, in the comments, not direct messaging me, but in the comments so we can see them, whoever announces the uh, right answer first wins the giveaway. And I, I'm, I apologize, but it has to be a USA resident only because of the shipping and all of that, you know, across the borders and everything going on right now. So apologize for that. So I'm going to ask uh, the questions at the end of the show, guys. You got to stick around because the end of the show, I'll be announcing those winners. And uh, you don't want to not win and not get your prize. So, okay. So our first question is going to be for the Legendary Foods giveaway, which is amazing, yummy food. If you haven't tried them yet, you guys got to go try them if you, have, if you don't win this one. But anyway, so the question is, what does the PB in Mike's workout program stand for? Don't say it, Mike. <laughs> I, was, I was typing it in right now. I'm trying to get online so I can win this. <laughs> hey, you know what? Really quick, Flex Wheeler was on here a few a couple months or so ago, and he actually won his own, one of the prizes because no one could answer his the question about his correctly, and he went on Instagram later because no one answered it correctly on the show, and he went on Instagram because he really wanted to have the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, okay, great. All right. So the second question, you guys, is what is Mike's son's name? Ready, set, go. And that one is for Egg White International, which I'm just curious about your um, time with Egg White International. You're using the product and how long, Mike, because I know that you and uh, Egg White International have a good relationship. Mac and I have go back, I would say, uh, mid-90s easily, um, back at the beginning. Um I was probably before those guys, but yeah, no, it's a long relationship, which is awesome. And, and it's a great giveaway. Easy, easy meals. Uh, it's egg whites, egg whites, liquid, <laughs> throw it in the, the shaker. Boom. Easy as can be. And but I it's do it not before, raw. It be a trick. Um, I do it before bed and I put in a little flavor of uh, a protein drink uh, scoop with it. And uh, oh, beautiful, beautiful night protein. Doesn't stuff you, doesn't uh, fill you up too much, gives you a nice protein to build muscle and recover. Boom. Mm -hmm. Boom. Hey, oh, so a lot of people, a lot of people are confused. They say, when you say liquid egg whites, they think it's raw. Do they? Well, yeah. I mean, is, I have, when they first hear about it. So how, what do you say about that? Because it's not raw. <laughs> I, it's not raw, but I do say also that a legend just got online. I don't know if you noticed. Clark Barton. Clark went live on this thing. Hey Clark, well he came on a couple, maybe a month ago. He was on as, yes, he came on right before. My feelings now, I thought he was coming on because of me, but he's already been here. <laughs> he, nah, he loves you and I know he was looking forward to coming on and saying hi. Well, of course you were my, you know, you were my first invited guest and it just didn't work out for the timing before, but um, so here we are, but you know, you were the first one I invited on, just so you know that, like, out of everybody. Anyways. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you hear that, Clark? Yes. She likes more than you. Uh, does Mr. O, does Mike O'Hearn, does Mike dream about me? Oh, Clark wants to know if you're dreaming about him. What? Yeah, oh, 24-7. 24-7. Mona does not like it, but she's oh, okay. No. 24-7. Okay, Clark's asking, I guess he's asking me who's better looking, you or Clark. So what is it, the fifth? Is that the quiet where I don't have to say anything? I plead Let's the fifth. Let's just say Clark, he's very sensitive and emotional, so just give it to him. <laughs> I'm, and I'm okay with you saying I'm second to him. <laughs> oh, boy, I can see it's going to come back and forth. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you guys, uh, I see that some of you are already working on those answers. Remember, at the end of the show, I will announce that, and then we will, uh, whoever wins will connect. Oh, you know, sometimes I say we're going to hook up, and I'm like, well, that kind of just doesn't sound right for a married woman to say we're going to hook up. So, anyways, I'll connect with the winners, and uh, we'll get those <laughs> addresses and all that good stuff so you can get your prizes. So, Mike, um, how, how's everything going with, with you being there in California with your son? Like, just kind of what does it feel like right now where you are in the situation that we're all living in? How are you handling this with you know, work and Mona and your son and walking through this crazy time? Uh, well, I, in one sense, um, I'm blessed to be able to live my son's first year 
uh, with him almost every single day, uh, 24 seven because of the lockdown. So mm -hmm. that's been a blessing. Um, uh, I am safe when it comes to training. I got locations to train at, so that's okay. Um, and then just uh, business is booming um, because of the fact that I'm trying to teach people that it's more about nutrition and then secondary weightlifting. So that is enhanced and it's nice that it's come back to my core beliefs uh, and people are starting to catch on to that. So that way, that way it's great. The downside is uh, California is a crazy place and uh, I'm not a politics guy and it's, it's a harsh thing to see our country go through this. Um, I am a believer that America is the greatest place there is um, and the, the possibilities that you could do well, you live in America is incredible. And again, my girls comes from overseas, got here, created her own business, didn't even speak the language and made herself a multimillionaire. Um, and so I can't argue with America is not the greatest place if you're willing to work and put in the effort. Mm. I love it. I love it. I know I have a few friends, you know, that I keep in touch with still out there in California. And you know, it's just hard to hear what they're going through and you see stuff on, on, you know, even if you're not watching the news, you'll still see stuff pop up through YouTube or you hear stuff. And I, I just have a heart for everyone out there. And of course, everyone everywhere. I mean, you know, we, we live in a really um, blessed part of San Antonio. We don't see a lot of craziness. You know, the worst we have right now is just, you, you know, everyone wants you to wear the stupid face covering, which <laughs> I'm not in favor of. <laughs> we got to breathe. We got to use our lungs and you can't do that with some face covering. And then the other part that I get grossed out about really is that people don't wash those things and that's disgusting, really bad. I mean, maybe once a week or something. So how can that ever keep anybody healthy when you have this dirty, nasty thing that people touch with their hands? Okay, I'll, I'll get off on that because I can. <laughs> we can do a whole show on, on <laughs> that situation. <It's, laughs> one thing I wish is it was wish the, I wish there was more love in this uh, world. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful place. America's great, and um, I'm old school, so I, I'll never go away from the mentality of uh, I don't need anything handed to me. I'll work for it. I'll get it myself. Um, mm -hmm. I don't need the government. I don't need handouts. Uh, I'll I'll strive for it and get myself wherever I need to be. Well, you love America, and I do too. And you've got a really cool flag behind you. Has that been up for a long time, or is that something newer? No, that's that's the whole wall. The whole wall's a flag. Oh, so so it, cool. it's uh, it's been up uh, for about two years now. When we uh, redesigned this uh, podcast room, and uh, no, it's representation of what I believe in. That and uh, the whole bunch of the trophies and swords and fun stuff. All American guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have always thought you look like, you know, and I hope you don't take this wrong, but, you know, that beautiful Ken doll, and I'm sure you've heard that before. You're like the human Ken doll. <laughs> Never heard that before. That is, that's, that's the first time. That's <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, is all of this, so uh, before we get started into the start, I, I'll quit now, but I, I do want to come up um, and talk about how you got into bodybuilding because your name is, you know, has been in the history of this industry for a very long time and you know anytime you bring up bodybuilding people know who you are and so how did this start for you can you share kind of your backgrounds and you know how old were you i've heard bits and pieces but i'm i'm interested to hear started lifting at eight nine years old i started olympic lifting competition at 13 did my first bodybuilding show at 14 um, and when I competed at 14 years old, uh, I walked on stage at 176 pounds at 14 wow. and beat 19 other teenagers that were all 19 years old. Two weeks later, after I won that show, I did my first powerlifting meet and I won that as well. Um, so I was hooked. I was hooked before 14. I was hooked by nine or 10. I kind of knew what I wanted to do. By 17, um, I was already in the fitness magazines, um, getting ready for Teenage Nationals uh, in bodybuilding, NPC Teenage Nationals. Um, Chris Cormier was there that year, Gerard Dente, some other guys there that I competed against. And um, from 87, I started in the magazines and I'm still in the magazines today. So it's kind <laughs> of cool that it's, let's see, that's 33 years later, um, still in the magazines and, and doing what I love. 
Um, I competed by the time I was 20. I won the uh, Natural Universe, Natural America, Natural USA, Natural International. I continued on to win the Natural Universe four times. Competed in powerlifting, won the California powerlifting, and overall many times, four times, Washington State uh, before I even less, left Washington State. Now, how did it all begin the secondary career? Um, you and I needed, compared to today, like you said earlier, you said social media is a big thing, and it is a big thing, and, and you can create an incredible future, and I think it's a beautiful thing to create because it shows personality, and if, if somebody in Iowa has a great personality and a decent body, and they become insta-famous, I'm okay with that. Yeah. During our era, we could not do that. We had to actually not be paper champions. We had actually had to be real champions. We had right. to compete. We had to win. We had to get into the magazines. And we, the only way to do that is kicking ass um, and working for it. And so mm -hmm. we earned our fame uh, as youngsters, you and I, and even people like Clark Barton that are on here. Uh, right, right. That uh, I, I got to tell you a story about Clark and how we met. <laughs> okay. It's interesting. The people I meet, we bunded heads at the beginning and then lifelong friends. Um, <laughs> so uh, we, we had to win, um, which I think to us, and I want to teach my son this, is competing and winning or just competing and going head to head with somebody uh, gives character. Um, win, lose, or draw, uh, it gives you character. If you win and you're a pain in the ass and arrogant, well, that's going to give you that character and you won't be in it long. Right. Um, if you lose and you get up and you fight again, that will give you some serious character. Um, and so it was a beautiful thing that you and I had to work for it and win to do what we did. And so it's not just that I'm in the magazine since 87 that I'm proud of. It's that I'm still one of the top five guys in the world for guest posing. Um, mm, that's awesome. And, I, and so, and I, and I haven't competed in over 20 years. So it's, it's a nice thing that we're still doing and we're still winning. We're still kicking ass and we're still competing in a sense. Mm -hmm. so I love that aspect of it. Um, but Joe Weeder and Clark will tell you the story. Joe Weeder, um, called me up. He saw me and called me up and says, son, you're coming to California. I already met him once and he goes, I need to know who you are and stuff. And then he flew me down, put me under contract. And from 20 years old, I was under contract with Weeder. So mm -hmm. that really took it up and over a level and mm -hmm. really changed my career. And my the the road I went was a different road, um, but it was his influence that made me do the different road and, and go solo a different way than a lot of the other guys that was with me at the time. So. That's kind of how I got there. I won. I competed. I kicked ass. I was bred for this. <laughs> I love this. I bleed this. I would do this, and I've said it many times. I don't do it for fame or money. I do it because I need it. Uh, I need that battle. I need that. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's running through panes of glass for a Guinness World Record, lifting heavy weights, or getting on stage and guest posing. I just need a gladiator type of life battle. Um, I love that style. Style of living for me. And I've well, made my in that way <laughs> yes of course um so speaking of the battle let's talk a little bit about your um american gladiator because that was pretty big now just i never got on the show but they had a see they had it they came here to san antonio so i don't know i don't remember how that worked out but they did a maybe it was, what is it, a show here i went and did the tryout and i went and i was um they brought me on as an alternate so maybe it was was the show going because this was back in the early '90s. Yep. And I just remember I was on as an alternate, and when I when I saw what they were doing, like out there, kind of doing the actual show and filming, I was actually really relieved I wasn't out there because I'm not that kind of like aggressive towards other people kind of person. <laughs> like all day long track, and I'm aggressive and I can do that stuff. But volleyball, yes. Basketball, no. Soccer, no. Like you can have the ball. I don't want it that bad. So, so I just remember sitting there going, I hope no one gets hurt because I don't want to go on and do this. Oh, that's kind of funny. But anyway, so talk about that a bit because that that I know helped um, outside of all the magazine exposure and what you were doing that helped you um, gain a bigger and broader audience, right? You would think. It's interesting. Um, there's so many projects I've done television wise. Some of the first movies I did was like Death Becomes Her with Bruce Wilson and Goldie Hawn back in 91. 
Um, and then I got gladiators in, in 91. And um, at that time, I was Thor on gladiators. What it did teach me is this. It teach me to watch those guys that were uh, the lead guys on the show. And it taught me to how to work a microphone, how to uh, carry yourself as a, a TV guy and stuff. And so I learned a lot of that. And the side, the other side of it is I'm a guy and I was I grew up with brothers and sisters that all did martial arts and power left and bodybuilding. And that's my sisters as well. So I grew up with 10. So the aggression part is easy. For me. I, I, I love the battles. So that part is no problem. And so I got to be this guy that, you know, all American football player. And then I get my bodybuilding dream. And then I get to continue to kick ass on TV with gladiators. Um, and like you were saying, did that give me a lot of stuff? The first gladiators really didn't. Um, the first gladiators taught me TV, which is a huge benefit. I got firsthand experience. Um, and then from that, I got a TV show called Battle Dome, uh -huh. which was, if you didn't like gladiators, you would have hated Battle Dome. Oh, Mike, I, I went and auditioned for that, too. Did you really? Yes. And I, it was crazy because I was getting ready for a show that year. And that was like one of my only days off. And I went to the audition and I remember getting my butt kicked because I was exhausted. But they, you know, I don't remember that one if they had me come back or what. I just don't remember. But I just remember going, why did I go do that? Because it's just like the other thing. <laughs> Uh, but I did uh, go to that. So go ahead. <laughs> more violent, more violent, uh, <laughs> a bigger a bigger character. Um, and it was my first really like I led that show, which was nice. I was the face of the show. Okay. Um, so I got to use all the techniques I learned earlier and the experience I learned from the, uh, the elders uh, how to carry myself. And so that really helped me. And then I did that for a few years. We went over and did uh, WCW wrestling. I did a lot of guest spots. And then I, um, from that, booked a couple lead movies. Movies, uh, two movies that I love. Um, the first one is Barbarian. And the second one is a kid's movie called Keeper of Time. Um, both barbaric type of movies. The first one is just me being like Conan. And the second one is me protecting a young uh, boy with powers. So it's kind of cool that I get a share those one day with my son, uh, a couple lead movies. And then Gladiators came back. And then this is the one that probably you were thinking that really um, gave me exposure. And this new one from NBC gave me a lot of exposure. And again, it was nice to be the face of the show and the lead Gladiator. Um, and then it helped that I went out and I went undefeated as well. So <laughs> it was, that, was, that was nice too. But both for the ego and for the character. <laughs> that's that's fun. Well, that sounds really like exciting as an athlete to be able to do all of those things. I know I'm my number one thing is I'm an athlete and I really thrive on being ath athletic. And I think other people that have come into the sport that are like yourself, you're a true athlete. You know, that's probably why you thrive so much too. Um, I have to do a question. Have you ever done the um, uh, the Gallup Strength Finder test. Uh, is that the one where you're the ropes and you're pulling down? Oh no, no, this is something you do uh, online. It's about finding the strengths of your your like personality and your um you know your your mindset and all that. It's just kind of an interesting oh, Gallup okay. Strength Finder. Thanks. Pardon? That excites me. Will you send me the link to that? Because yes, I was yes. So it's really interesting because when I when I took it. Everyone thought because I've been a competitor for so I was competing for 26 years and track and horses and everything that I competed. And everyone thought, oh, my gosh, all day long, you're one of your strengths is competition. And I thought, I don't think so. But we'll see, because competition is one of the strengths that they, you know, put people, you know, they, they give to people. So um, it's in the list. Anyways, you can do your top 34 strengths or you can just do your top five or whatever. So I did all 34 and my number one strength was learner. Oh, and competition great. for me was at the maybe in the 20s or something. I wasn't even in barely anywhere near the top of my strengths. And I find that interesting because when I looked at the strengths and I started reading it, I got all choked up and emotional. I was like, finally, somebody understands me. And it was a computer, right? That understands me, or the, the, the program. But it just showed me that, yes, I.
that be one of your top five or would you be someone like me where you love that journey and you're obviously a, an amazing athlete and consistency and your mindset, you know, you achieve a lot because of who you are, not just because you're competitive. But anyways, I'll send you the link. You'll have to check it out. Let me know what your top I five would be interesting. I hope it's learner. That'd be incredible. <laughs> it, it's such a, uh, just imagine the benefits from that. Always yeah. wanting to learn and, and keep growing. That's huge. Thank you. Thank you. And I, you know, what's so funny is I tease my husband because sometimes he gets frustrated because I'm always trying to share something with him. And he's like, all right, it's all right for you to learn stuff. But I don't know that. I. And I'm like, well, remember, I'm just a learner at heart. And he's like, all right. That's <laughs> funny. Uh, that's good stuff. OK, so, Mike, you have shared a lot about all of these different things. What do you find? um what do you find you or if you look back and you could just do one thing between between, you know, the acting and all the shows or the bodybuilding and all the guest posing or um, a power lifter and just powerlifting? Could you just pick one of those that if you had to choose one and that's all you were able to do, would there be one that you could choose or did they all just so mingle together that you couldn't pull them apart? Well, if, if we remove money. Um, from it, mm -hmm. uh, we were, oh, it'd be tough to give up any of those aspects of it. Um, <laughs> Mike, you can only do one thing. <laughs> that's a great question. I don't, I, I it possibly, if it, money wasn't a thing, um, if there was no other aspects of, of the benefits from doing what we do, uh, I'd probably do more of a uh, dog rescue and that'd have been the one thing I could do. Well, that's not in any of those top choices I gave you, but that's completely different. So tell us about that. <laughs> no, I just, I, I find true peace and in, in, uh, when you're stressed or, or, or need to just be alone or uh, comfort or anything like that or excitement or, or um, the energy of a dog for me is, is uh, pinnacle. It's a pretty amazing thing. So for me, and also just to save them, help them and uh, do stuff like that, that would be mm. something that would be meaningful to myself um, with no financial benefit from it or anything like that. That would be a, that would be a cool, that would be a cool journey. That's pretty awesome. I agree. And I, I always think if I could, if I could learn more from my dogs of, you know, loyalty and attitude um, energy and all the things that dogs, I mean, I, we don't need to, you know, we all, if you love a dog, you understand that, that bond and they're always excited to see you. They're always, you know, there for you. They're always like ready to do whatever they don't, you know, my little dachshund likes to eat a lot, but that's okay. <laughs> but you know, they're, they're so, they're such wonderful creatures and it's neat that, you know, God said, I'm going to build you this little animal that's going to live in your home with you and you're supposed to take care of. And so I have a heart for those animals too. And, you know, I do like cats and I, and just a kind of a interesting little side note, um, outside of our backyard, we have a wrought iron fence and we have a green belt. So we have a mama deer with two fawns that have adopted us and we feed and water. Oh. And then I've got two chickens now that have adopted our backyard too. not our backyard, but right across the fence. And so I have two little chickens and I feed them every day and they've been with us I, almost two months probably. And I, every morning I go out there and I see them. I just thank the Lord for bringing them into our existence so we can enjoy their little, little clucking and scratching and all the things that they chickens do. And then it's cute when they're with the deer and they're like all like literally right next to each other, the chickens and the deer, and they're all both eating together. It's just so cute. That's a cool thing. I mean, I, I, I relate with that cause I grew up on a farm. So I had chickens and ducks and Guinea fowls and uh, ah, so yeah. rabbits. Um, so it's a, it's a cool thing having those animals around and just nature like that. Uh, you know, it's fun to hear. And, and how many dogs do you have right now? I got three. You have three, okay. Yes. Huskies and a timber wolf. And did you rescue any of them? All three. Aww. <laughs> Huskies are pretty easy and uh, nobody wants a timber wolf. So. No one wants a timber wolf. <laughs> I don't even know what that really, um, is that part wolf or is it full uh, wolf? Or? It's a half breed. It's a half breed. Is it aggressive? You would think because of the terminology of a wolf, but actually they're more docile and more of um, in need of a leader than dogs. Interesting. And if you know Huskies, if anybody knows Huskies, you guys know those kind of, uh, they're very diva. 
So they're, they're, <laughs> they're all little bosses, um, but the Timberwolf is so loving. Um, oh, yeah, it's great. the first one that runs to you and hugs you in, in the morning or at night, always next to, which is cool, the bond uh, she has with Titan. Didn't give that away because already people have talked about it. And who's Titan <laughs> anyways? I don't know what you're, me, right? No, uh, no, that was your stage yeah. name. Yeah. That was your, your stage name. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to see the bond uh, she has with uh, the little one and, and just always around, um, walking with them, protecting mm-hmm. them, keeping them safe, keeping them from bumping into the walls and or breaking things. I love it. That's really special. And so um, before we get any further along, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to go to your rapid fire questions, Mike. Are you going to be ready for this? Oh, sh- bring it, bring it. <laughs> okay, guys, just so you know, we have rapid fire right now. 10 questions that Mike does not know. <laughs> he hasn't been told the questions. And after that, we're going to go to a really quick uh, commercial break. So don't go away. It's really fast. Stay on this edge of your seat, because when we come back, we've got more good stuff to talk with Mike about. All right, Mike. Here we go. And I'm going to try and read fast, so you see if you can answer fast, huh? Okay. Uh, If you're... (laughs) All right, ready to go. If eating out, do you choose a discreet location or a more public location? Um, uh, Discreet. Discreet. Yeah. Well, now we put the mask on and all that, right? So... (laughs) Okay, um, most memorable opponent on the American Gladiators, or could be Battledom, whichever one. Uh, a kid from uh, the Olympic team. He was the uh, uh, 190 um, com- wrestler, and uh, we battled because he kept winning his uh, rounds, and so we battled like three times. But it was fun because, man, we butted heads, and to compete against somebody at that level just heightened my level, and it was cool to. <laughs> see not only how aggressive and how well he was but how much i upped my game so he made me better uh, he inspired you that's great and you still won though i destroyed him of course destroyed. you have to <laughs> yeah i love it that's awesome good story okay do you like sports cars or luxury cars mm, uh suvs oh okay that's good S- and i guess you can have a sport suv i i go that i don't fit in the little ones and i want to drive a tank Okay. Um, okay. Does uh, mom or dad call the shots with Titan? Who's, who's uh, the disciplinarian and who's the fun one? Or is it? Mom calls the shots with both of us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. If Panda could talk, what would be the last comment she made to you? I'm still hungry. That's my dachshund too. <laughs> is that all? Serious? <laughs> all right. When you introduce Mona, how do you introduce her? Boss. <laughs> That's great. That was fast. <laughs> She's got you trained well. Is. Good job, Mona. All right. Boss uh, or gangster? <laughs> boss or what? Gangster. Gangster. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, who keeps track of bills, you or Mona? Uh, Mona. Mona. Okay. Um, favorite travel destination? Oh, uh, Dubai. Dubai. I've been wanting to go there. That would be cool. Uh, favorite phys- favorite physique from all of the bodybuilding legends outside of yourself? Flex Wheeler. Ooh, good deal. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He'd probably love to hear that. Best Clark thing? Bar- what? Clark Bartram. Clark Bartram. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he does have a great physique, right? Oh. Um, best thing about Mona is? So strong. She's so strong. <laughs> do you mean like lifting weights? So do you mean oh, in, in mentally? <laughs> just you grow up in a third world country. You get dropped off in America without parents. You mm. can't speak the language. You you go, that's life. Too bad. I'm going to crush it. And yeah, that's so strong. Wow. It's just, uh, yeah, it's a, you need to talk to her because everybody well, talks to me and then they talk to her and they go, Mike, you're not interesting next to her. And I go, yeah, I, <laughs> I see you guys this. Uh, and she's a, she's a different different level. Will she come on my show in a future date? Uh, yep. She I won the universe. I don't know if you knew that. She's an IFBB pro and won the universe. And she, uh, ran, cool. she ran Muscle and Fitness hers. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize that. Yeah. 
And maybe then, that's is that after I left um, L.A. and kind of came out here, maybe. Yeah, I think that was um, 2010. Right. I was here in Texas and kind of not associated with the magazine so much because, you know, I wasn't with the IFBB anymore. So anyways, we won't go into all of that. But <laughs> is that that's all the cool. questions or we got one more? No. Uh, oh, let me see. Sorry. Um, no, that's 10. I had 10. Okay, then let me ask you. Because we got to go, and I want you on my show, because we at some point need to talk, because I really want to go into depth about the the change, because mm -hmm. you were the first person I knew, mostly at your level, that did what you did. I don't think, I don't know, your fans probably know, but my fans probably don't know. Uh, you were so strong about your um, beliefs and stuff that you, you decided to do something that nobody's seen. And I, I don't want to say it now, but it's just, it's a beautiful thing, and I just... Re truly respect that and want to show that to the world. Well, Mike, thank you. I would love to be on your show. So we'll uh, connect maybe tomorrow or something by text all with Mona and Jeff, and we'll set something up. That would be amazing. Absolutely. Okay, guys, we're going to go for a really quick, uh, about two-minute commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, and we're going to get some more good questions in with Mike and throw a surprise out. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Here we go. Hey guys, we're super excited to be here at the LA Fit Expo. It's our third year in a row. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be launching a tasty pastry. It's a low carb Pop Tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs. And we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. All right, all right. We back on. <laughs> all right, I think we're back on, Mike. I don't know, the internet's been a little bit wonky tonight, but I'm thankful we're still here. And hopefully you guys can hear me. I just wanted to say thanks to Sarah Lyons coming on. Hi, girl. <laughs> nice to see your pretty uh, picture and see that you're on here. And... Um, Jeremiah, I wanted to ask, are you, Jeremiah Daniel, are you here in the U.S.? Please let us know. <laughs> All right, Mike, are you on with me? I am. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so, Mike, you talked about, um, you know, everything that's going on right now being a blessing, and that's really wonderful to hear. And I'm, I have to tell you, I'm really thankful you used that word. Um, for me, when I hear the word blessing, it, it just – it inspires me. It makes my heart larger. It increases my faith because when I hear other people talking about blessing versus luck, then it really is um, a special word to me. And I, I uh, appreciate that you said that instead of using the word lucky, because for me, take using lucky is just like, oh, it's a four leaf clover or the leprechaun or, you know, something that really doesn't make sense. And when you say blessings that adds God back into the picture. And right now, it just seems like a lot of people want to take him out of the picture. So I think I thank you for using that word. <laughs> no sweat. No sweat. I, I, I love the uh, the approach of just trying to keep it positive and good and, and know that mm -hmm. it's there's something. something, so, something. Yeah. So let's talk about Titan a little bit, because I I've, you know, watched some of the Instagram pictures and videos with him. He is just adorable. And then you mentioned that you started weight training at not eight or nine. So how old is he right now? He's a, a year and four months. A year and four months. So he has about seven years before he. you're going to have him weightlifting, huh? Well. Um, or is yeah. he already? <laughs> I'll start him like I did. I'll probably do a couple different changes, um, which is great that I, I went through it. So I won't force the weightlifting on him uh, at that age. There's so much more he could be doing uh, to build that muscle and stimulation 
um, relative to just lifting the weights. That's great. So does he hang out with you while you're working out right now, if you're anywhere uh, that he can be? Comprehend this. When I grew up, um, 11, 12, 13, I was training with uh, five guys. And what I didn't know at the time, because I thought watching these guys lift, I thought a thousand pound squat was normal. A 600 pound bench was normal. And we're talking about the early 80s. So as a kid, also, I didn't think a 300 pound man was big. So I'm with lifting with these guys. And as I get of age of 14, 15, then I realized that uh, it's Doug Furness, Doyle Kennedy, and Jeff Magruder, who you may not know, but the, if you're a power lifter and you know your history, you'll know that Jeff Magruder was the first guy to do 605 at 242. Doug Furness was a thousand pound squatter. Doyle Kennedy's one of the first guys that did it, um, a 900 deadlift. So it was these monsters. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because if you go to Bally's or a 24 hour fitness and the guy squats 315 and you grow up with 315 in that gym, that's your ceiling. Mm -hmm. My ceiling was a thousand pounds. That's average. Mm -hmm. So my growing up, I didn't think 300 pound men were that big. So what I love is that I had this distorted belief that I could be anything and as strong as I wanted, um, which I'm hoping that I transferred to him because his mom was Mr. Universe. I'm Mr. Universe. And everybody that's over at my house is the heavyweight UFC fighter, or we got NFL football players, or we got these um, basketball players at six foot 11 uh, over here. And that's all he is around. And, and all that's all he sees that are working out, these guys working out. And so you got this one, two year old kid it's walking in the gym, pushing around the weights now already, and I hope that he is distorted to believe that he could be as big and, and, and do whatever he wants. I hope that transfers to him. <laughs> wow, that's pretty awesome. And, you know, I, I, I guess what you're, how you're describing that I, I can really relate to because just on a very small level with uh, my track background and how I grew up in the track coaches I had growing up, how hard they pushed me and my teammate back in high school, junior high and high school, versus what uh, my goddaughter, as we're helping her through school, she's at tr in track and what her workouts were in high school. And, and to me, I'm like, how can you ever get stronger if you're not doing the workouts stronger, faster and stronger mentally for track? How can you ever get there if you're not doing these kind of workouts that I did in high school that led us to, you know, some massive, massive fast times and high school records that still from 1987 haven't been beaten yet. So uh, it, I guess it's that same kind of theory, like you're saying, wherever your ceiling is, you know, you, you kind of get stuck on that spot. But that's pretty cool. I, I love seeing you and Mona with your son. I just it's such a beautiful thing to see you guys together. And thank you for sharing that special part of your lives and allowing people to see that side of you. Cause a lot of men don't show that real well, you know, cause it's a kind of an emotional sensitive part, but I think it's oh, very special. I'm fine with it. I'm that emotional guy that will cry about my dog passing. I'll, 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 uh, I'll put that out there. Okay. So. Let's not, let's not talk about that. Cause we might be in tears. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Kona, if you can hear me, um, let's bring on, uh, Mike's, um, because I want to make sure Mike gets off in time. So let's bring on the um, the uh, special surprise. <laughs> I guess I'll say that. Mike's like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Hey, what trophy do you have behind you right now, by the way? Um, Mr. Universe, Mr. America, and then Barbarian. And then, oh, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, the Mike O'Hearn product. The what? We, oh, yeah, we need to talk about that, too. Is that sitting right there? That is this so so sweet. happens. Let's talk about that while we're waiting for your guest or your... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, your uh, surprise. Uh, joint support, um, a pump product without any stems, cream for the skin, and a test booster. So you can try something before if you ever go down, don't go down the other road. So um, they're products that I believe in. That could, um, first of all, I think you and I can agree that uh, it's not just the body and the muscles, but it's that skin, uh, healthy, healthy skin. 
Um, mm -hmm. I, I know people bypass that and they go, they don't give it any thought. But one thing that, you know, we've been on the covers forever and we need to take care of that skin. And not just there, but just the abdomen and all that kind of stuff. No matter how great shape you're in, if the skin is not healthy, it still doesn't look good. Um, so skin, joints, again, you can probably verify this as well. Um, I know people as in their 20s don't think about it. But the one thing that I always focused on was bone density, connective tissue, more than um, being the most muscular guy. I always thought if I can continue to be healthy and continue to grow um, and uh, make the body adapt to the pressure I put under, I can always train. I can always get better. It's the only reason I'm here. The things I did in my 20s and 30s uh, awesome. is the only reason I'm still lifting today like I do. So, so you have some apps right now as well. Um, can you share about those apps? Because I know that that sounds pretty cool and everyone's, I know, yeah. like to hear about that. Yeah, it's um, uh, the first one is the Titan meal plan. Um, I believe nutrition is, again, first and foremost, I can actually train or change a body with nutrition alone without exercising. And I think you probably preach the same thing that if you just eat healthy, you can change a lot. Um, and then add in the cardio and the training after that point. Um, but I can't change anybody if they're just willing to train and not eat correctly. So we right, have to right. Do, uh, nutrition, take care of that first, take care of the body, take care of the skin. And then I have a program for uh, my principles of training, my power bodybuilding principles and philosophy of training. Well, um, is that all on the app then? Or are there two different apps? Everything's on Mike O'Hearn, and then the apps are from there. Okay, so that's easy. People can find the apps there. Yep. That's cool. So is that? Do you have uh, Scott over there on one of those on one of those programs? I do. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Clark, I love Clark was just doing a program I put together called the Thirty Day Blitz. I don't know uh -huh. a couple of weeks ago or, or what he's going to look like in the next couple of weeks. Clark always looks good. So it's a, it's a hard one to do. But what I love about Clark is it. it uh, Monica. It, it took him. Yes. For it. Hello. Uh, I'm on. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on one sec, Rick. I don't know. Cohen has got you. You know what, Mike? I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. He was former military and he's an executive protection agency right now. And. He has a very cool story and I wanted you to hear it because it involves you and it's something that um, made a very big impact on my friend. And I thought this would be a cool opportunity for you to hear a testimonial of who you are and how you treat people. And it's been many years and I'll let him share a little bit more, but sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to make sure we got him in so you could hear yeah. from a fan. And I know you hear a lot, but this is a friend of mine, and I wanted to let him come on and share this cool story with you. So, Rick, if you'd like to come on and come on and bring him in. Yeah, uh, uh, abs absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Um, so the the situation was this. I had um, come over – I've come back from being overseas, and um, I was told that I wouldn't be returning back, and I lost my team. Um, it's just that they decided not to renew my contract. So in essence, I, I kind of lost my family and I was really depressing for me. It's what I'd known for 10 years. I was upset. I was unmotivated. Um, one of my friends knew about it and said, Hey, would you like to come out to Redondo beach? I said, yeah, I said, that's fine. So I went out there and I had always heard of Venice beach gold's gym, the, the Mecca of all bodybuilding. So I drove, I must have driven by there about five times. I didn't have the courage to walk in. I, I just didn't. So I ended up working out at a Gold's Gym in a mall nearby. Well, after a couple of days of that, um, the gentleman that worked there said, hey, you need to go to the Venice Beach Gold's Gym. And I said, no, no, I, I just, I can't do it. You know, and he said, no, it, it, they're very friendly there. You know, you need to go see it. So after a while, I decided to go over and it took me, I kid you not, about 20 minutes to get out of the vehicle to have the guts to walk through the door. You know, seeing all the greats that walked through that door, it was very intimidating. Um, so I walk in and immediately I, shall, I see Sean Rodin uh, training with Charles Glass. And it was it was just overwhelming. And I kind of, you know, I walked around. There's a bunch of buildings within that one building. So I kind of roamed around and I was seeing all these people I'd seen on magazines, the posters. It was just very overwhelming. 
So I got through my first day and I left and I decided I'd go back a second day. Uh-huh. The second day I went back and I'm wrapping this up. Um, I was really nervous. I wasn't feeling good about being there. And I turned around and I saw you and I said, you're Titan. And you <laughs> said, I'm, I'm, I'm Mike O'Hearn. And I said, I said, oh my gosh. And he said, what are you doing today? And I, I think I said, uh, biceps. And you said, all right, let's get it. Let's go. And you pointed me the way I started lifting. You came back up to me and you said, Hey bud, how you doing? I said, they're doing good. You you said, come on, let's get it. I got to meet your two dogs. and (laughs) I saw the way you interacted with the people at the gym. I was constantly watching you. You were smiling, you were friendly. And before that moment, I thought you had to look mean, you had to act tough, you had to have, you know, this frown on your face. And you really changed that for me. And within those few moments of getting to meet you, I really understood that I knew you as Titan, but you're not only a Titan, you know, but you're a Titan in your attitude, your presence, and most of all, your heart. You gave me those brief few moments and I will never forget those moments for the rest of my life. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And ev- every time you get brought up, I tell everybody that story about you. It was such an honor to meet you. And I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And Miss Brandt gave me the opportunity. And more than anything, I, I just want to say thank you for those brief moments. Oh, man. That's a, uh, thank you. Thank you for telling me the story. <laughs> yeah, we've. Rick and I have been talking about this for a few months now because I kept saying, nope, he's going to come on another night now. So Rick's like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And I kept bringing him back in. I said, I wanted you to hear that, Mike. I mean, it was one thing for me to hear it, but you know, I know it's really important for us to hear how the things we've said and done, how they've um, inspired and affected other people's lives. So thank you so much, Rick. Thank you, Kona, for bringing him on. Uh, Rick will be in touch. (laughs) <laughs> that might be the coolest thing ever done on a podcast for me. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Those are the things that happen here. It's all about uh, just blessing and building other people up and edifying others. So, okay, so we were talking, just want to make sure we talked about your apps. Uh, um, I know Mike O'Hearn, we can find them on the doc, mikeohearn.com, and you probably are talking about them on your social media as well. Talking about that, we're talking about uh, the vitamin line, which I'm so happy about. I got two, and I think you know Whitney Reed. Um, Name sounds familiar. Whitney is, uh, he is running BPI, and so uh, Whitney and I have been friends forever, and I got him to kind of help him launch his fitness career, and we got to, which is the story he just said, I'm glad that um, I was that man that day and, and, and was kind like that. And I think, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll get to the second subject here. Whitney and me have been ten, friends for over 10 years and stuff. And so that came, that friendship came back around and I got to team up and become partners with BPI with my own line. So that has been wow. a thing. And if somebody's listening to, for the kids that are listening to the story we just heard. I'm hoping and begging you guys, uh, and we talked about this, about how your daughter's training today, mm-hmm. and they're missing the umph uh, and the, and maybe the character of, of getting pushed to the limit as we did as kids. Um, be true to who you are and try to be as kind as you possibly can, because those things do come back around, um, and, and, and who you are, even if uh, it, I don't care if it's the janitor in a bathroom, treat them the same way as the the multimillionaire client that's uh, giving you stuff. Just treat everybody kindly and and, and try to be kind, man. Try to be kind out there and be a good person because those kind of things really do come back. And it keeps you in the peak of uh, whatever industry you're in. I think character is a huge thing. Absolutely. So... Um, this, this just thought came to mind and, and maybe we can touch on it. Um, because what you're talking about sometimes takes an awful lot for people to be able to do when there's, um, pain from somebody's, uh, maybe hurt, hurt, someone's hurt, hurt them, or they've been mistreated. And I know 
in all of the success, there's times that you've felt like you've been maybe um, betrayed or, um, you know, somebody's word wasn't true or something like that. How do you handle those kind of situations? Because I know you've got this heart that you want to take care of people. You want to treat people well. So how do you handle forgiveness on your level? Like, how, how do you think about that on your level? Uh, well, here's the, here's the thing. Uh, everybody you probably interviewed, uh, there is a downtime and there is, there's a hardship. Um, and my life has not been perfect. Uh, I had hardship. I, I got lucky and got out to California and made hand over fist finance. Um, and I'm one of those guys that was very trusting and kind. And to a father figure, um, I kept investing up to a million dollars. And uh, he took my first million and split town. Um, mm, mm, mm. so as a young 23 year old by then, uh, made my first million and then got it stolen from me, crushed me. Um, but my dad later on, um, and I held that anger, uh, because it was my money. I earned it. I worked my ass off for it and I was saving it for a future. And, uh, um, my dad said something to me that was amazing and it is true. Uh, and it probably, it was a little heightened because he was going through cancer at the time. Mm. He, um, I was so angry about everything that that's all is you couldn't talk to me. Um, and this, this lasted for quite a while. This is, this is a couple of years of just anger and not getting over it. I continued forward in the process of work and everything. But again, I still had that anger. Uh, he said to me, he said, I am dying because he had cancer at the time, mm -hmm. says, but you are dead. You don't live your life anymore. All you're doing is holding on to something that happened. Um, a man can go out and make a million and lose it and make it back. Go live your life and start living and stop, you know, and, and that coming from someone that says I'm dying, but you're dead is a huge, huge statement. And I think when you're walking around angry all the time and, and people treat you, people are going to treat you bad. Let's right. just accept that. People are, people are going to take advantage of you. They're going to use you. They're going to take it, uh, use you for whatever you're worth and then get rid of you when they're not helpful. That's life. That's how people are. Right. Stay true to that core group that's there with you when you go through things. Um, those are the people that you need to pray in, stay with and keep around you. And then let go of the anger because he's right. It's, it's, I, was, I lost a couple of years of my youth because I was just so angry about what happened to me. And all I had to do is go back out and make it again and realize that that's life and I won't make that stupid mistake again. But it, it's, it's not a mistake that may not happen again. It's just I know that I can't go through life being that angry uh, and lose everything around me. And speaking of someone that lives his life, and I love how he lives it, is Clark Bartram that was on here. Mm -hmm. His dear friend of mine, also godfather to my son, Titan. Oh. Um, uh, has been friends with me since 90, um, since I competed against him. Um, <laughs> hey, but uh, the great thing about him is is friends like that, uh, if you guys don't know Clark Bartram, I'd go follow him right now. Friends like that is, is what you keep around you. My dog passed, and when my dog passed, there wasn't a phone call to me. There wasn't anything to me except a knock on the door when he heard what happened and he lives in San Diego, a three hour drive. Uh, it was a knock on my door going, Hey, I'm here. Oh my goodness. That, <laughs> he knew, he knew you needed him. That's a friend. Yeah. You didn't even have to ask so for you guys that are out there that are hurting right now or going through something like now, please just keep close to those people. Don't push people away. Mm -hmm. Let go of whatever anger or somebody did something to you the best you can. I know that's not easy and it's easy to say, but um, the best you can, keep them close to you. I love it. Well, I always feel like unforgiveness is just a damage to a, ourselves. It's like a poison that we swallow because the other person half the time or three fourths of the time doesn't really even know that they did anything or they don't think that they did. And it's really, you know, it's, I, I understand that, you know, it's about a 24 hour window that you can kind of be frustrated, angry, and God's okay with our emotions. I believe he created anger as long as it doesn't go the wrong way. You know, but then we got to release it and move forward. And then your dad's instructions to you was really important. And thankfully, you learned that young as a young guy, not waiting till you were 40 to learn that. Right. Yeah. Most people don't. 
Wow, that's a very big, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing, Mike. Um, I know our time is getting near to the, the closing of the Monica Brandt Show, and it's always hard for me to say goodbye. I have to be honest that that's one of the hardest things for me. Um, we've got to announce um, our winners, our winner. <laughs> I think we have just a winner. Mom, where is that? I'm sorry. Where is the name? I have my mom's here helping me. She's always a big help here. I love having her here too. Okay, let me see. If it's so it looks like the same gentleman won both. He was the first one to get both answers right. So let's give a warm congratulations and a round of applause to Jeremiah Daniel. Nice. He is. He won both answers. Um, Mary Weibel. Mary, Mary Weibel came in second. So Jeremiah, if for any reason you want to share one of yours with Mary, I think she came in like almost a second after you, something like that. If you don't, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can, but if you don't, you don't have to. So just throwing that out there. I just want to thank you, Mike, for coming on and sharing you guys. Um, Mike, if you have anything else you want to share before we can let you go, I know that um, I can talk a lot. So <laughs> if there's Are anything else... The only thing I would say is to any, any listeners out there that are um, pushing your health and fitness, um, well, listen to this young lady here. She is bright. <laughs> she knows what to do. Um, and she knows that it's, it's first, and I agree with her 100%, always be an athlete first and then be a bodybuilder, power lifter, bikini person. Uh, you know, it, it stay athletic is possibly – as long as you possibly can, that's going to be true longevity. And I think uh, when her and I talk about longevity, longevity is not about how long you live, but about the quality of life you live. Absolutely. Right? Hopefully you guys take that into consideration. I know that the great abs and all that is, is a nice thing. Um, <laughs> the end of the day is how functional are you and how, how well can you move and groove and uh, keep that. Absolutely. Good. I so, am done. <laughs> hey, Mike, real quick, is Titan there with you? I'd love to see it. You think we can get him, Jeffrey? Oh, yeah. We get Titan. I'd love to see him. And it was the dog, your uh, your wolf. Was he or she? Sorry, is she there? Was she the one talking? Was that? You got interrupted his lunch. <laughs> yeah, I interrupted um, his lunch. His, <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. And Mona can say hi too if she feels like it. Oh, oh look, beautiful family. Hi, Mona. <laughs> Hi, Titan. Hi, cutie patootie. Hi. You're on TV again. He's You're on TV. He's Wait, like, what? I, I was eating. Show the leg work. Show the leg work. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Mona, you look beautiful, girl. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, Mona, I want to have you as a special guest in the future. Will you Will you join me at some point? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. I love seeing the family dynamics. So beautiful. And oh, you guys, <laughs> he's like, Mama, I don't want to be on TV right now. <laughs> Interrupt the food, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, can't interrupt it. Hey, he knows he's supposed to be eating enough calories, and you know, so you're throwing off, or I threw it off because I asked if he could be on. So, <laughs> well, I, I know you need to get back to your evening. So, um, thank you so much, Mike. And you guys, make sure you check out uh, Mike on all social places. Mike O'Hearn, MikeO'Hearn.com. You can see his apps. You can see more about his apparel and. All the different products that he's offering and i'm sure we can you can find out more about how to get hold of his supplements um mike you know what mike yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna last thing i'm gonna say is oh. i am i'm turning 50 in october look is that panda that's panda <laughs> so beautiful how much does she weigh uh just 80. just 80. <laughs> she's so pretty look at her beautiful expression i love it <laughs> you're turning 50. I'm turning 50 at the end of October, and I might need a 30-day blitz. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine? I could. You well, know, then, then, then you're just going to go, okay, I'm going to get back on stage. <laughs> well, I did win an Olympia. May I go back on? But I, I, right. unless I have to do fitness, I can't do fitness again, that's for sure. And which one's this? This is the Timberwolf. Oh, she's beautiful. What's her name? This is Khaleesi. Khaleesi, how much does Khaleesi weigh? She's a, she's a, a, a stringy tall one. She's about 80 pounds too. She looks so big. I know. Long legs. Oh, Their bone structure is different. 
So she's wolf and husky. And husky. Okay, that's the combination. She's yeah. gorgeous. Look at her. So shy. <laughs> she's a lover. Aww. I love. I will send you the blitz. Uh, you got to You got to take before and afters because you're gonna love this. And I think you're gonna love the. Uh, I do a lot of different things that I think you and I will talk about when we talk next okay. time. Behind, is is things that I don't want people doing all year long. But for a short period of time, I'm okay with it. But well, it's very intense. So you know Sarah Lyons with Picture Group Photography? Oh, I know Sarah. Yes. Yeah, so she and I partnered up with one of uh, a, a piece of her Picture Groove, and we have epic destination shoots. And so she just left San Antonio a week ago. Gosh, I've, so we've been putting these together for about a year and a half now, doing um, these um, destination shoots. And we have about usually about a week long, and we we book models and we work together on it and. We have video and hair makeup. So, you know, all that, you know how all that works. But so Sarah, and she's also got um, Bodyscape magazine, which she publishes. I'm not know if you're familiar with that or not. And I'm now an as associate editor, which I'm really excited about being a part. But um, Sarah said that I have to, well, we've talked about me shooting again for my 50th. And I'm like, I want, if I'm going to shoot for my 50th, I want to, I want to look different than I look right now. Like, I, you know, I want to tighten things up, you know kind of have a little spark for my 50th photo shoot. So maybe that uh, that blitz would be a good idea for me. I think you'd love it. And Clark loved it. And Clark, and you're crazy like us. So I think you would yeah. like the whole, <laughs> yeah. whole transfer on that. How fun would that be? So my birthday's on October 26th. I probably should be, you know, the month before September, be looking at that, right? Yeah, I, I, would, I would do the blitz and then relax after it for a week or two before your birthday. Okay, that'll be cool. I'll have to um, get back with you on that. I'm going to let you go. Mike, you th Mike, thank you so much. Thanks we'll talk. For I'm glad we got to team up. Um, and again, thanks for what you're doing and what you've done. And I can't wait to talk to you on my side so I get to ask all the questions. <laughs> okay, sounds good. It's a deal. Maybe everyone will come back over there. So I'm going to let you go and then I'm going to have I have some closing notes so you guys stick around okay. for just a second. And uh, bye, Mike. There's bye. your pose. <laughs> Bye. All right, you guys, I have some closing notes for you guys. I wanted to just talk a little bit before I let everybody go for the rest of your night. Thank you so much for those of you that joined in and, and um, just celebrated Mike with me. I really appreciate your time. I know there's a lot to do. Kids and families and there's a lot of other things that you could be watching. So thank you for joining here. And those of you that tune in on YouTube later, because all of these um, episodes go on over to my YouTube channel. So thank you guys for joining there and um, and saying hi. So thank you for your comments. Um, I just wanted to kind of throw a couple things out. I announced the winners. So um, Jeremiah will be in touch with you. And oh, Jeremiah, actually, if you're still listening, if you could just email me info at monicabrant.com, info at monicabrant.com. Um, that would be great. Um, we want to thank you, my sponsors, Legendary Foods, Egg White International, Owl Life International, Bodyscape Magazine, and Picture Group Photography. Special thank you to Barbara Casarin, who is my makeup um, artist that's helping me with getting ready for these shows. She's here in San Antonio if you guys need a good makeup. And she does hair, too. Just tonight we decided to let me go on that, Terrell. Um, if you need any good photos, hook up with Sarah Lyons and Picture Group Photography. You can get in touch with me. I can direct you. Uh, we do... Um, destination shoots as well as in-person shoots and virtual shoots. And we've done some virtual shoots, which are pretty, pretty cool about that too. So if you have an iPhone and want to do virtual shoots, let us know. It'd be fun to connect with you on that. You can email me for any of those things at info at monicabrant.com and I can get more details to you. Um, let's see. Next week, I have an IFBB Pro, Linda Stevens, on. I'm really excited about what we're going to be talking about. So all of you women and men that are feeling like you're in your midlife, you guys got to join because she is a nutritionist. She's a, been a, an athlete and a professional competitor for a long time, and she's helping a lot of people with midlife mastery. So you guys have got to come check out next week, same time, same place, here on Facebook. Uh, let's see about anything else. Oh, I'm still doing, guys, I'm still doing my live body weight only exercise sessions. It's kind of hard for me to say that all really fast, but... Wednesday nights at 8.30 Central, Saturdays at 11 a.m. Central, 8.30 p.m. Central. So Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings. You guys have been doing these since March. And I have to tell you, this, this 
two weeks ago, I went back to helping my husband at the barn riding some horses for his business because he's showing and we don't have anyone at the barn there for the horses that are left. So I haven't been riding since the beginning of the year. So I went back last week to ride. And I have to tell you, after having done these body weight sessions that focus on glutes, hips, uh, core strength, posture strength, shoulder strength, and I got on these horses and I couldn't believe how strong I was from doing pretty much only that. Only the body weight has been my consistent thing. There's been a couple weighted exercise sessions I've done here and there, but for the most part, every week, twice a week, I'm doing these body weight and it's takes about a 45, 50 minutes and I do a warm up, the workout, and then I do a cool down with different stretching. Um, everything's dynamic in the beginning. Um, again, it's all body weight. So there's no excuses. You can do these workouts wherever you are from any country, as long as you can, you know, join me at that time. Um, I am recording them. We use Zoom. So you can just log in from the comfort of your own home. You don't need a lot of space. You just need a small space. And then you can train. And I'm actually hosting, coaching, and participating in these uh, sessions. So if you guys are interested, I'm only charging 15 bucks a session. It's not a big deal, you guys. You could spend that on two glasses or things of coffee at Starbucks, right? Or maybe one. I don't even know how much that stuff costs anymore. But so I'm offering those. And I do have them here in August coming up tomorrow night's the next one. Um, I do have a verse of the day I want to share with you guys because I think it's important to bring in faith as well as fitness. And I feel like this is the verse that I wanted to share with you guys. It's out of Isaiah 50. It's verse four and five. And it reads this, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to those who are weary. So I ask the Lord all the time to give me a divine appointments and to be able to speak um, something that will bless other people and bring more knowledge to the Lord, not to myself. So I thought that was a great verse, especially right now. There's a lot of people that are um, they're weary, they're tired, they're emotionally drained, they're physically drained. There's so much on the news that's really hard to understand and take. So just um, that's a prayer. This is literally a verse that you can pray that God can give you the voice and the understanding of how to speak to someone in the season that they need it and season meaning moments right so you we can all bless others and edify others so i'm going to close out with that thank you so much for joining me tonight as always stay fit love life and i hope to see you guys on the show next week tuesday night talk show tuesday the monica branch show with linda stevens over and out kona thank you so much for producing the show and thanks for winding us up <laughs>